So for example number one, we are going to analyze a form table. So in my Google search, if I search for invoice form example, we have a list of forms that we can use uh, for demonstration. And let's use this one. From this form, we have a table, an address field, a bill to field, and ship to field. I'm going to right click on this image and I'll copy the link. All right, so here I'll uh, name the URL. Let's call this uh, form URL. Alright, so let's import the uh, libraries first. I'll import the JSON module. And from Azure, the core, the exception, Azure exceptions. I want to import the resource not from error class. And from Azure, the AI, the form recognizer. I want to import the form recognizer client class and it should be a recognizer. I'll also import the form training client class and to pass the API key from Azure dot core dot credentials. We need to import the Azure key credential class. All right, so here let me uh, let me import the libraries first. Next, I want to import my credentials. So open the credential.json file. And I'll load the values using JSON's module. Da low. Let me check. Oh, I know why. This should be Azure form recognizer. Because uh, this is not my uh, main directory. Here, let me try again. What's going on here? Oh, this should be credential, not credentials. All right, so here I'll create my API key variable. And the endpoint variable. For now, I'll start with the basics. All right, so here let's create the uh, Azure form recognizer client instance. So I'll call the form recognizer client class. And let's name uh, the instance form recognizer client. And we need to pass the endpoint. And to pass the API key, we need to wrap the API key uh, using the Azure key credential class. Now we have successfully connected to the uh, Azure form recognizer uh, service. Now I want to go to the documentation. All right, so for demonstration purpose, I'll be passing the URL address as the image source. So essentially we have two ways to pass an image. One is to URL and the other one is to a binary object. And let's look at an example. So here we have two uh, identical methods, except that one is uh, from URL, and the other method is well the URL. If we compare the parameters between these two methods, oops, here let me go back. The only thing difference is using the uh, from URL method, we'll be passing the URL address. First, if we use the uh, forms method, we'll be passing the uh, file as a binary object. 
And to analyze the form table, we'll be using uh, this method called begin recognize content from URL. Right, so from the form recognize the client instance, I'll call the method begin recognize content from URL. And I'll pass the form URL variable. And I'll name the output as polar. And I'll create the polar option. Oh, so this should be begin recognize content from URL. And the only thing we need to provide is the uh, image URL. And I'm getting the attribute error. Let me take a look. Oh, I know why. I've got the uh, L at the end. All right, let me try again. Okay, so I'm getting the uh, invalid image here. Let's take a look. Oh, so if I copy the link, I think it's going to take me to the uh, URL. All right, so let's use a different image. Uh, here, let's use this one. I already have a backup. Now, let me try again. All right, so this time I'm able to create a policy object. And to retrieve the result, I want to reference the results method. I'll name the output form result. If I print the values using the VAS function, and I guess this object doesn't support the VAS function, that's okay. All right, so if I print the form result object, And this is what the output looks like. If we look at the output, so each page is a form page object. And since uh, this form, oh, this invoice only has one page, we'll only have one form page object. And here we can say that for page in form result, we can extract information such as how many tables on, uh, on this page using the page.tables. Actually, let's do this. So I'll merely create a page object. And it's going to be the first element. And I think I can use the false function now. Yep. All right, so here we are getting a lot of uh, content back. If you want to know how many tables are in a page, so we can reference the tables attribute. And from this invoice, there's only one table. All right, so here I'm going to uh, array each table. So for table in page.tables. And we can uh, extract information such as how many columns are in that table by referencing the column count attribute. And this will be column count. Inform to know the row count. We can reference the table option that row count. And that'll give us uh, four columns and four rows. Now, if I look at uh, this table, 
So including the header, we have four rows and four columns. And to extract the sales information or the sales value, we need to uh, iterate each cell within a table. So for cell in table that sales. We can print the value by referencing the text attribute in the bounding box uh geometry information. And this will be location. And this will be cell value. And this will be confidence value. Right, so let's do a test run. So if I uh, iterate each page, so for page in form result, then I want to iterate each table within a page. Then I want to print the table's content. Right, so if I run this code block, We have four columns and four rows. And the first value is going to be quantity, CTY. Here, let me put this side by side. Okay. Description, unit price, amounts. And the next value is going to be the quantity count. Description, unit price, and total amount. Then we'll go to the uh, second row, description, unit price, and total amount, and so on. And if you want to align the values, uh, you can basically use the X and Y values to check if this item's uh, Y value and this item's Y values are the same, then they belong to the same row. So using that logic, you can basically uh, put the information as a single table. Alright, so this is going to be everything I'm going to cover in this video. For the next video, I'm going to show you how to analyze receipts.